G'day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here. Today I'm gonna bring you another do-it-yourself video on how to adjust the valves in a four-stroke motor. This is a small uh, four-stroke motor, 700cc in a generator, electric generator. And to get ready, uh, I wanna talk to you a couple, talk to you about a couple things. One is, when do you adjust the valves? Why do you adjust the valves? And how do you adjust the valves? So when you do it is according to the manufacturer's recommendations, which is typically, well, uh, it varies by engine. I, sh I should start by saying that. So you must have your manufacturer's recommended uh, adjustment interval to know when to adjust them. And also the manufacturer must tell you the clearance that is expected, the separation. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So uh, various engines, if you run it a lot, 300 hours could be, you know, six months worth of use or 300 hours could be 10 years worth of use. So it just depends on the amount of usage on your, your engine, how frequently you have to adjust it. And uh, so that's when you adjust it. Um, why do you adjust it? Well, the reason why is because the clearance will change over time. That happens because as the valves wear, they drive deeper up into the head in an overhead valve engine like this one. So the valve will come this way. The top of the valve will wear where the rocker arm pushes on it. Not very much, but it does happen. The part where the rocker hinges could wear. The push rod that pushes on the rocker arm could wear. So the push rod, you can't see it, but it's underneath my finger here. And of course the camshaft lobes, I mean, in theory could wear as well. Not very much, but they could wear. So when you add up a wear in all of those places, you get clearance that will change. And then the reason why you want to adjust it is so that you have optimum manufacturer specified clearances for best performance, best power, best starting, best fuel economy, and most even running and greatest longevity for the engine. So those are the reasons why the valve's clearance would change and why you would actually be bothered to do this. A lot of people would never bother to do it, but a lot of people, their engines wear out. And I guess, you know, you can trade maintenance for a replacement of engine costs. Uh, that's, that's a choice we all have to make. So to get it to the how you do it. Well, the first thing you wanna do is remove, remove any spark plugs so that the engine will roll over easy by hand. Remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that we're holding this valve cover on. And the valve cover has a gasket here, which is reusable. So if you're careful and you don't tear it when you take it off, you don't need to replace it. And now you'll be looking at the valves. Well, it's very important that you put the valves in the right position and put the camshaft in the right position for checking clearance. You have to do it precisely. Now, the first thing you need to do is realize what rotation your engine goes. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? So right here, we have a flywheel. And I didn't know whether the engine turned this way or this way. And so I just took the key and just bumped the key, just bumped like that, and the engine spun in the clockwise direction. So I know the engine always spins in the clockwise direction. So for this whole procedure, that's the way that I'm going to spin this flywheel. Now, there's some theory on four stroke, and you need, to, you need to do this so that you set the piston in the right location, so that the cam is in the right location, so that the valve tra train is in the right location. Now, there's some theory on four stroke engines that I'm not gonna get into too deeply, but basically, let's start on the intake stroke. The piston's at the top of the, of the travel, and then it draws down into the cylinder and the intake valve opens. That draws fuel and gas into the chamber. Then the piston will rise up and with both valves closed and that compresses the fuel and air. Then the spark ignites that uh, mixture, causes an explosion. It causes the piston to go down in the power stroke. And then what's left in the chamber at that time is exhaust. So the exhaust valve opens and the piston rises and pushes the burnt air and fuel out the exhaust port. So that, those are the four strokes in a four stroke engine. It's pivotal, and if you get anything out of this video, remember what I'm about to tell you, it's pivotal when you're setting valves that you set the piston at top dead center, which means the top of its travel, on the compression stroke. Don't have the piston at the top of the travel at the end of the exhaust stroke. That is not where you set the valve clearance. A lot of people get this wrong, and in many engines, it doesn't matter because the clearance will be the same because the cam profile is the same. But in certain engines, it makes a difference whether you're at the top after the exhaust stroke or the top after the compression stroke. And you should always 
be checking valve clearance at the top of the compression stroke. So how do we know that that's what it's gonna be? Like, how do we know that's the position? We're gonna look down there, and I'm gonna rotate this engine. And see the piston peeking at us there? There it is, right? That shiny part, that's the top of the piston. So that's how I know the piston's at the top. How do we know which stroke we're on, whether it's uh, exhaust stroke or uh, power stroke? Let's set this for top dead center. And actually, I'm gonna roll through the four strokes. So the exhaust valve is open. Okay, here we are at the, the piston's at top dead center right now at the, at the end of the exhaust stroke. So it's ready to do the intake stroke. So when I roll this clockwise, that intake valve right here should open, and it does. And the piston's going down, fuel and air would be drawn in. And now the intake valve is closed. Now we would be entering the compression stroke. And uh, as I'm moving the piston up, both valves are still closed. And then the piston would go down after the spark plug sparks and the um, power stroke would occur. And then the piston would start to come up to push the exhaust out and you see the exhaust valve opening. Those are the full four strokes, okay. So I know that right now the intake valve is open. Now the intake valve is closed. And when the piston comes back up one more time, that is gonna be the top dead center for the compression stroke. I knew that because I could see the piston coming up. There's a lot of carbon on the top of the piston. You can't see it very well. If you don't have good light, you can put a straw down there and you'll see the straw rise up with the piston. So that will be one way for you to know that you're at top dead center. Okay, which valve is which? Well. There's the exhaust pipe and there's the exhaust valve because it's close to the exhaust pipe. I know the carburetor feeds fuel and air in from this side, and so that's the intake valve. So the specs for this engine are from 0 0.08 millimeters, that's this feeler gauge, to 0.13 millimeters, that's this feeler gauge. And I'm gonna check to see if the 0 0.08 fits. And it does not. And 0 0.06, let's see if it fits. I just wanna see how tight this is. See the 0 0.06 fits through there. You're looking for just a little bit of drag. You're not looking for too much drag. And that is showing me that the valve is, you know, it's a little bit tight, 0 0.08. Oh no, I'm sorry, it goes through, it goes through. 0.10. Point one zero is starting to get a little tight. What you can do, if you're careful, is undo this and take these out. In fact, I'd like to do that. It, you just have more control if you're not dealing with this whole thing. Uh, you'll feel the drag better. So I got these out individually now and I'll be able to feel the drag a lot better. So there's a 0.1 millimeter. I guess it did go through. There's a 0.13, how about him? He won't go through, 0.13 won't go through. So since this is 0 0.08 to 0 0.13, that valve is in, uh, in spec. Now, I kind of cheated because off camera, I had already checked this and set it right, but you're gonna see the next one is not set right. So, so I just wanted to snug this up a bit. So you put two wrenches, one wrench on the outer, or the bigger nut, and then one wrench over the top lock nut. They were unsurprisingly hard. Okay, and now that I've got this tight, I'm gonna check again. 0.8 doesn't wanna go through, so I've tightened that too much. My tools are so cold. Oh. A loose valve, by the way, is better than a tight valve. So when you're adjusting, you should be adjusting on the either the middle of the range or on the loose end of the range. We finally got organized here. So there's the 13. This is the top of the clearance range. Won't go, right? See the feeler gauge bending? And there's the dot one millimeter. Once you get it in and things lined up, there's a bit of friction there. Sometimes you gotta rock the rock around a bit, but that's perfectly fine. There's a little bit of drag there. So that's the point one. And then if we try to go back in with the point one three, won't go in, even if you rock the rocker arm. So this is set to 0.1 millimeters, which is right in the middle of the intake range, which was 0.08 to 
I do recommend you, after you think you're all done, you rotate the engine around fully, rotate it around, and then recheck them all to make sure that, that they are precisely where you think they are. Again, pay attention to the top dead center on the compression stroke. That's when you want to do the uh, valve adjustment. That, that's really all there is to it. You know, if you have to, if you're in the tolerance, but you're on the tight side of tolerance, I would adjust it to be in the middle. If you're in tolerance on the loose side, I would leave it alone because you're not gonna damage a valve that's on the loose side, but if you're on the tight side, especially if it's an exhaust valve, the valve doesn't seat properly and it won't exchange heat from the valve into the head properly and you can burn the valve or the valve seat. So it's better to be a little loose with the valves than a little too tight. So that's all I have to comment on for the valve adjustment for a four-stroke engine with rocker arms that have lock nut adjustments. Good luck with the do-it-yourself videos. If you like my video, please subscribe.